What's going on everybody? Back in the bathroom for another video, another vlog. Today I have some plans. Um working on a couple things for the cars. A lot of people have been asking me uh how did I run the wires for my wire tuck and my engine bay. So today I'm going to go it kind of in depth. I'm not gonna take any body panels off, but show you exactly how I ran most of the wires or all of the wires, uh, what I did with the brakes, what brake booster and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get into that today. Also, I wanted to go to Cars and Coffee this morning, but with the puppy and the temperature outside, and I was tired, I just didn't just didn't make it. So I do want to debadge the GTI um, today and just probably overall just go over some things just on the Jetta just to make sure everything is perfectly good for the air to water show coming up on the 17th of February at Napleton uh, Volkswagen. After that, um, I had planned to want to do a podcast with Christian today, but I believe Christian is in St. Augustine on a gymnastics meet. So that idea got scratched, but I did get a lot of good questions for you guys. So I was thinking about doing a question and answer section at the end of the vlog. Um, nothing too hardcore, just answer the questions that you guys posted and then that'll be it. But first, but first, I'm looking like an old man. There's hair all over the place. I think I need to shave and get a haircut. Like a garbage truck, but it's Saturday. Anyways. So I'll see you guys back after this. All right, haircut and shave done. Look and feel better. Now let's go outside and mess with the GTI and then the walkthrough on the Jetta. All right, so we are now in the garage, finally, to continue today's activities. Everybody loves a cold start. struggle you park your car way far away from where you're going so hopefully no door dings hopefully I said before a lot of you have asked 
specifically Tyler out in Cali, has asked questions about how the wire, how I ran the wires for the wire tuck. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick walkthrough, go over the brake system, and what exactly I had to change. The main thing, main harness normally would come out of one or two of those holes, which I have filled up. But what you do is, or what I did, I'll just go over what I did, not what you should do. I drilled a hole about here underneath the fender. And the hole is big enough to fit the, the main, just big enough to fit the ECU harness uh, Molex connector. That's as big as you need it. Because that's the biggest plug that you're going to have to fit through. I fit that through. Uh, I forget how big it was. Maybe a two, two and a half inch hole. Something around there. Brought all the wires out. And ran them. Um, they're all screwed into wire hangers. Along the bottom of this fender here. On the frame rail. Now, when you pull your fender off, you will see that there's a square hole here. And on the opposite side for rain drainage for water. When water hits your rain drain and comes down and falls down through here, there's a square hole that's that fits through there. The plug for the ECU won't fit through that hole from factory, so you have to make it a little bit bigger. I hit it and made the square a little bit bigger so I can fit the plug through. And ran the ECU is still in the same spot, everything like that. All the wires that are normally connected up here are still connected up here. And then pretty much I brought all the wiring down. I think majority of the lengthening is from here about halfway to about here. So it's probably a good 18 inches I think I extended each wire. I don't know if I could see, could see it from this is some of the wiring. It's headlight wiring. You can see there's a loom right there. That's where the wire is coming down. That's like in the front of the fender, but down towards the bottom of the frame rail. And then the wiring comes down the bottom here, along the rail, along the main support for the front motor mount. And then it branches off. And then I have the main wire harness that comes up to the engine here, going up, 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 and connects right down there. So I took it out of the bracket and stuck hanging right there. All the other wiring for like the headlight harness and all that stuff is just tucked up underneath here, which is pretty basic. And all the wiring that's for this side, like the MAF sensor, um, the O2 sensor connections and all that other good stuff, those wires are extended up here. And again, Coming through the square hole, the rain drain hole here, extend it down. And to get into the body, there's a hole. You won't be able to see it. There's a hole underneath this fender I just use for the brake lines where your brake lines would normally be. You could see it there. And all the wire connections are down there. Is that a wrist I see? Eh, could be. But it's connected through there and extended and into the, all the proper connections. You can see some of them fell out there. I gotta put that one back. When the engine's cool, I don't feel like burning myself. So pretty much that's it with the wiring. Uh, as far as power wire and grounds, all my grounds are underneath this frame rail. Like I said before, take your paint off completely, drill some holes. You could drill and tap it or you could just find some self-tapping screws. And the power wire, as you can see, is connected to the bottom of the starter. I always like to flip my starter because normally your connections are up top. I flip the starter so it's down below. It kind of hides the wires just a little bit. So it comes, one wire comes off the alternator to the starter. And then I have a big uh, zero gauge from the, uh, no, it's two gauge. Two gauge welding wire from the battery in the back to the starter here. And it pretty much just runs along the same thing. Comes up and all the way down like a normal car audio setup. Runs to the back to the battery. 
So that's basically it as far as the wiring goes. Um, any of the other wiring on the motor was just cleaned up and tucked away. So the only thing you really see, I really dig this cover. It covers up a lot. And if you're doing a black style motor, mostly black, electrical tape will hide most of the wires in plain sight. You won't have to worry about hiding too much. Now there's people that do a way cleaner job than what I did, but for me, this works. Never had any issues. So for now, I'm good. And now on to the brake system. Okay, this is a 98 VR. The newer cars have the brake booster, ABS, the rear prop valve, everything in one big, huge control unit. If you look in your car and you see that big thing with the hoses, lines going all over the place, that's it. Everything's encased in that one whole unit. Obviously, you don't want that in your car, so, I mean, if you're doing the shave bay and all that stuff, yank all that out. You do have to get a 2.0 um, slave, no, well, 2.0 master and booster because the bolts are switched on the 2.0 they're left and right on the vr they're up and down so they won't work see this stuff has been sitting out here the stuff that didn't get painted one day i'll go through and take all this apart and repaint it to make it real nice and pretty but like i said to me it works and i kind of really don't care that much so new booster new master and you might say, well, you only have four lines. Yes. The reason why you only have four lines is now that you've taken the prop valve out, you need to send uh, proportioned uh, brake fluid to the rear. And shout out to Kyle. He gave me the, um, how he showed me how he did his, and then I pretty much copied it. All, these are all brand new brake lines, by the way. I think the car has all brand new brake lines. I put all new brake lines. Um, when I was doing it because I wanted to have that little bend there and by the t they were cheap I mean the brake lines are like seven bucks I think for each one when you get a couple lengths that's all you need and then by the time you run it to the back you might as well just put all the brand new ones and they're easy to bend so what I did uh interesting part about this one there's one of them that is a different size i believe it is the fitting that goes to the driver side maybe driver side or passenger I, I can't remember one of the front ones with the 2.0 master is a different size fitting let's just say if the rest are 10 mil the the one that's different is like an eight for some reason i don't know why it is but it is so I block one off because you're not gonna need it. And then one to the passenger, one to the driver, obviously, all new brake lines. And then I use one line that goes down to the rear of the car. Now, if I can get down here and show you. <laughs> oh, which I can show you. Uh, where is it? In here, there it is. One line from the front goes into this Willwood aftermarket prop valve where you can adjust the pressure from, you know, you can adjust it how you want it. If you want the brake, the rear brakes to um, have equal pressure, and then it goes back here. Where is it? Where is it? I think you can see it. I think it's about here. Anyway, there's a T. One line, it comes one line in, one line out to a T. And then I teed it off to either side of the car to their respective brake calipers. Very simple setup. It's very easy. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can just ask. I can, you know, DM you a picture. That's how it was sent to me. And it has worked perfectly fine. The Willwood brake prop valve, it's like $44 online, which is it's very cheap. And I haven't had any issues with it as of yet. And if you hadn't noticed, I didn't say it. Those are Mark IV calipers. I did the Mark IV caliper swap when I did the whole Mark II rear beam. And I think that's about it.
have to figure out where it needs to connect to, where does the factory harness stop in terms of length, and then measure out with just like a piece of string or a piece of rope how far you need to extend and then use that as your guide to extend the wires. You're gonna obviously heat shrink and solder both connections to make it longer to protect from you know the elements and vibration. And I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing. There are some wires that go to these sensors down here that are coax wires. Coax is sometimes the power wire is the positive, let's just say the positive, is inside and the shielding is the negative. You need to connect both, otherwise you'll get interference. I um every wire I think only came across maybe like three or four that um were coax wires cables and you have to do it. You have to uh, solder to the positive which is the inner cable and the outer grounding jacket to have a perfect good connection because you don't want to have any issues while you're driving and something be intermittent and then it, it'll just be a headache just a real big headache now some people I know like to run their wires in the frame rail or up in here my thing is if you if you have an issue and you have your wires in this frame rail you're screwed because how are you gonna you what are you gonna do you can disconnect everything and pull your whole all your wiring out to get in troubleshoot something not me i'm not going through all that mess i pulled this fender off all my wires are wrapped up right here if anything happens and there's any issue so but knock on wood i haven't had any so far the car runs great back home the gti is a complete mess it is dirty i'm going to do a quick wash and then debatch all right, like before in my other videos that I've showed that I've done this, pretty much heat gun, heat up the decal, sticker, badge, whatever it is, heat it up real good, pretty much kind of just hot to the touch. And then you can use, ideally you'd have like fishing wire, something like that. I have plastic scraper trim tool, decal, um, squeegee, peel off the decal and whatever glue or adhesive is left, you can literally just rub it out with your hands. If you heat it up good enough, the letters literally want to come off by themselves just make sure you're real careful not to all right this took all of 10 15 minutes maybe 15 at the most badge off pretty much all i did was use you can see a little bit of the glue left there but this is with the camera like four inches away. I use some of the Chemical Guys window cleaner with a blue towel and just buffed out the rest of the glue. This is what's left. Now the car is mostly debadged in the rear. Nice and clean looking. All right, welcome to the Q&A part of the vlog. If you lasted this long in the video, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it's been a long week and we finally hit 1,000 subscribers. Next week, I will do the drawing for the 20th anniversary shift knob and we will select a winner. There's gonna be some things you're gonna have to do first though, but we're gonna get into that in another video. So this week, I'm gonna answer the questions um, that you guys posted on my Instagram, Facebook, and I think on my IG stories. So, let's get into it. Alright. Whoa, man. Uh, J16 Caceres. I think that's how you say it. If I butchered your name, I'm sorry. He's asking, did I get my Jedi robe yet so I can properly be Yoda Greg? No, I didn't. And it's just a funny thing. I'm not really a Mark III uh, Yoda. Um... Okay, why do, it says, why do Europeans crave U.S. parts and us guys 
or Euro guide, US guides crave um, Euro parts. Uh, would it be because never had factor? Uh, that's from not from stock. Not from stock, that is exactly, exactly why. We didn't get the parts here, so we want to have what we didn't get. That way it seems your car is a little bit more exclusive. Not You won't see the parts every day, but parts have been coming over here now steadily for a few years, so a lot of the cars have European parts, and it's just the thing to do now. Now it seems like in the U.S., if you have a U.S. bumper, your car is different than everybody else. Um, my car, for instance, is mostly, I got a high percentage of all Euro parts. So if I took my car to Europe, it would probably just be a basic Mark III. Okay, VW Mafia says, what's the easiest way to reroute the wire harness underneath the battery tray after the battery relocation? I covered that earlier in the vlog with when I went over the wiring, how I did my wire tuck. So go back to the front of the video, the beginning of the video. Uh, somebody says, uh, ND, Endela gift. That's the only way I can figure out how to say it. Um, when are you going to fix that purple Mark III in your garage? Dude, that Mark III has been gone for months now. That car left in June, July, I want to say. So, yeah, that car's been gone, dude. Uh, it's a good vlog. You should watch some of the episodes. Okay, it says, from Caesar Euro Mark III. Hi, where do you get buy your accessories for your Mark III? Anywhere you can find them. Pretty much. Anywhere you can find them. Uh, Burn the Mark III's is a good page good resource page. Um, I have bought parts from Euro Tuning, um, Four Seasons Tuning, SA Tuning. Uh, I don't think I bought anything from ECS. I haven't bought anything from ECS. Um, AutoZone, Advance, Friends, anywhere you can find Craigslist. It doesn't matter, man. Like Volt, uh, Vortex, wherever you can find the part that you're looking for, that's where I buy it. So pretty much anywhere. Let's see, Silver Mark Three. I just want to shout out on the podcast. There you go. You know this isn't the podcast. Uh, Derek Baskerville, Dream VW Build, a uh, twenty-three window bus, a Beetle, and a Caddy. In that order, I think I'm. I wouldn't necessarily build another Mark III, because I don't think so, unless I got one like really, really cheap or one donated. It's because it's like building the same car over and over again. It's I had a black golf for a while. I did some things to that. Never really got to finish it to the way I liked it. I wouldn't mind a Cabrio, but at this rate, one of the older, older, older generation cars, maybe something uh, air cooled, definitely. Okay. Oh, Derek Baskerville asked again. Favorite wheels on a Mark III? Favorite are hard to say. I had a set of Schmidt model lines. I love those. It's a classic look on a Mark III. OZ Futura wheels are, are a good, are in my top three. And I think the five spoke um, Southern Epsilon Southern Ways, the five spoke ones, are really, really. Um, the ones that, they, that rounds out my top three. All right, where were we? I think I rounded out the top three of my wheels that I would like. All right, some uh, MDU 1212 Vince guys, which is more fun to drive between a Mark III Golf or Mark III Jetta? It honestly, I've had both. I think a Golf. Or a GTI would be a little bit more fun with a VR in it, just for like a little bit of weight. And you know, it's like the trunk end of the car is kind of like cut off, so you have a little bit more um, driving dynamic. Jettas are fun. They, they kind of drive the same. The cars are pretty much the same. It's either the hatch or a trunk. There's really not much different. A VR swapped cabrio, very fun to drive. Okay, 4735 underscore G asks, what mods should get done first? Um, maintenance. 
maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. If you have a VR and it has anywhere near 100,000 or over 100,000 and you're not sure if the chains are done, do the chains and guides. Uh, if you have a 2-0, 2-0 you really can't kill them. I would say do the timing belt and a tune-up and go about your business. But you always want to do maintenance first before you start buying fancy panels, parts or wheels or anything like that. Because it doesn't make sense to have a good looking car that's broken down that won't start or drive properly. One last thing. I've been toying around the idea with probably doing like a small merch run. Like maybe um, those animated stickers of maybe Christine or maybe like a t-shirt. I'm trying to find some people to get a logo made for at least like the channel or something that we all have something that I could probably put on the shirt for you guys. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. Hit me up, send me DMs, and I'll see you guys next time in the garage. Peace.